we have a packed episode for you today. Taylor just finished up her shows in Melbourne and we are going to take it to our correspondent Ty to give us all the deets on that. And then we'll come right back where you left me. Hey, howdy and hello and welcome to your weekly Eras Tour recap. Being the largest show of Taylor's career with over 288,000 Swifties in attendance this past weekend, the Melbourne Eras Tour was a big deal. And here's everything you missed if you weren't able to watch those shows. Before Taylor even arrived there in Melbourne, fans were excited for the Eras Tour, waiting at the airport with signs for not only her, but also Sabrina Carpenter, who returned to the tour for the first time in 2024 last weekend. And they both had some huge surprises planned for last weekend, as Sabrina Carpenter had new outfits every single night, alongside a new nonsense outro, and Taylor Swift even debuted new white boots for the lover set. But those new outfits were not the only surprises that we got last weekend, as Taylor also unveiled a brand new version of the Tortured Poets Department, which was available on her website for a limited time. In addition to that surprise, Taylor also made a huge change to the surprise song section, as now she can sing any song as many times as she wants and can even include mashups, which we saw for the first time last weekend. For night one, we didn't see any mashups, with Taylor playing Red on the guitar and You're Losing Me for the first time ever live on the piano. But night two is when things got interesting, as Taylor played Getaway Car, August, and The Other Side of the Door as a mashup on the guitar, and followed that up by playing This Is Me Trying on the piano. Then, on night three, we got Come Back Be Here and Daylight as a mashup on the guitar, followed by Teardrops on My Guitar played on the piano. Of course, with the Melbourne Airs Tour being behind us and all those changes in mind, I am so excited for this weekend in Sydney, as not only should Taylor surpass that attendance record which we saw her break last weekend, but we could also see even more mashups during the surprise song section. So get your golf clubs and get excited, as this weekend the Eras Tour is headed to Sydney, Australia. Woohoo! <laughs> Jesse, I'm ready, girl. Uh, for those who are listening on the podcast, Jesse just came back from our correspondent with Ty with a golf club. Sydney. Uh, so we did talk about this on the last one. So this is the infamous uh, Sydney, where in the blank space uh, section of the 1989 tour, uh, Taylor did a little shout out with each city with the golf club, the pole, all of that. I think we don't really need to go too far into it. If you guys missed that, it is on the last episode. Um, but if you hear us randomly say, Sydney, that um, that's where that's from. That's right. All right. So one of the things that I noted that I don't know that Ty touched on, but I think is really important for us to talk about is that the album title, The Tortured Poets Department, Taylor actually acknowledged uh, this weekend or this past week on the tour that it is difficult to say. And so she said, you can just call it Tortured Poets. And so just as a listener, uh, you know, we say TTPD, Tortured Poets. I've called it everything. So I'll just try and be better about saying Tortured Poets if, it, if the Tortured Poets department is too complex. It is complex. Yeah. yeah. And to follow that up, I was I had just been calling it Poets, but... Um, the re the the fact that she specifically said to call it tortured poets like sets off alarm bells in my mind. Like that might be an Easter egg for something. That's something we need to pay, pay attention to. Yep, yep. What did you think about the surprise songs and how she said that she is just kind of throwing out that rule book? In 2023, she said she would not sing any twice unless she messed up. I think Midnight's, there was an exception where she could play any Midnight song more than once. But now she's like, heck, I'm going to play whatever the hell I want. So what are your thoughts there? Well, I mean, thinking about how she keeps saying, you know, she's going to change the rules, break the rules, this and that. She's kind of said that throughout tour it kind of takes me to, you know, like the metaphorical her taking the gloves off at, you know, the Grammys when she announced TTPD, like throwing the rules out the window. I don't know, that came to mind. But also um, the surprise songs, I think that when she did the mashup of Is It Over Now and Out of the Woods, I think that the response that she got from that online and from the crowd was just astronomical. 
And that was last year, not this year, just for any listeners who weren't um, caught up with that. What do you remember when that was? Um, it was one of her last stops, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that she realized that the mashups are going to go over hard. Like, so I think we're going to see more mashups just because it's, it's generating, I mean, it's popular. It's, it's people love it. They scream in the middle of it. I mean, I'll say it again. I'll, you know, and I've said it before. I've never seen anything like this in my life. This tour. The whole tour. Yeah. Which of the two mashups would you say were your favorite? I would say uh, Getaway Car, August, and The Other Side of the Door. See, I like the other one better. Do you? Yeah, Come Back Be Here is one of my faves. It's like one of those bops that I didn't really know about that well until the re-records. And then um, you can't go wrong with Daylight. Like, I feel like she mashed those up a little bit less confusingly. Like, it was very much one mm -hmm. song and then the other and then back and forth whereas the one mashup on night two where she did getaway car august and the other side of the door there's a lot to take in there there is and maybe that's why my brain like gravitated toward that because her putting august in there when it's already in the set list mm -hmm. every night that's an easter egg so Okay, so obviously the mashups are such a big deal, and we had tons of people freaking out online. I do want to talk a little bit, though, about just some random things that are standing out to me right now, because she started with Red, which I found to be an interesting one. Like, of all of the things that we kind of saw in Melbourne, like the, the song Red, which is the title track from the album Red kind of being the kickoff, especially with what happened later on night one, where she dropped a like a new variant of tortured poets and she gave us that you're losing me like that was significant so like why red do you have any thoughts there i do so this is the second time on tour that she has played red all right the first time she played red was after the big range brain show in foxborough massachusetts so she played it on 521 it was going to be the second song that she sang. So on piano, she gets to the piano and it starts playing without her playing it. So mm -hmm. then, you know, I was watching that live on a live stream. So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to get haunted. You know, it's, it's the piano is going, it's not to me, that didn't seem like the rain damaged the piano and it just started playing awkwardly. I mean, it's Taylor Swift. This production is huge. They would have checked that piano. You know what I mean? Or replaced it. So she gets up from the piano and she goes to the guitar and plays red on the guitar. It was one of the nights that she did two songs on the guitar and no piano. So that's yep. what stuck out to me. So we don't really know the significance of her replaying it, but that was 521 and something's probably there. Something. I'll look yeah. into it more, but yeah, something is there. So it's really stood out to me as well on top of Red just kind of being one off is the uh, got we got another debut song. So in Tokyo, we had Come In With The Rain and The Outside. This past week in Melbourne, we had um, Teardrops On My Guitar. So that's like three debut songs within two cities, which really just stood out. I feel like there were several stints on the American leg of the tour where we did not get much debut at all. Um, so it kind of gives me like kind of questions of like, are we, are we hinting at debut? Is there something that bigger is coming out with it? Or, you know, why is she suddenly sprinkling more of those in? Yeah. Maybe she wants us to be kind of confused as to what re-record is going to come next. Or maybe she wants us to stop saying rep is and maybe it's debut. True. Could you be. know what stood out to me in particular um, with debut was that she did teardrops on my guitar on the piano, which mm -hmm. I thought was super unique um, and different. I'm not sure why she did that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was beautiful. All right, so circling back to night one. So that was a pretty significant night. The mashups were super exciting, obviously, but she really dropped something big on the first night in Melbourne, Australia, and that would be the extra variant of the new album, The Torture Poets Department. So this one has a different bonus track, which I don't think we've seen before, have we? Where the variants have different bonus. I mean, obviously the Target one usually has an extra, um, but not like, you know, the early rollouts. Right. 
So when she announced the Tortured Poets Department, you saw manuscript, the manuscript, right? It was a bonus track. And that's all you really saw. Now, when she just announced this new variant, you saw the bolter, Mm -hmm. which is a bonus track. Yeah, there's got to be some significance to just like highlighting the bonus track. So like to your point, like it's front and center when you're on the website, it's it's part of almost the title. And so the color went from ghost white to more of a like mauve color. Do you remember what that was called? Parch, uh, parchment beige paper. Parchment. Par- par- beige parchment. Okay. P- beige parchment. Yep. So like parchment paper, which she used to write poems on. Didn't she say that in TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. She said um, on tour once that she used to write poetry on parchment paper. Well, there you go. That was an egg. That was her definitely pointing ahead here. Um, Well, so she drops a new variant. Everyone thinks that the next song that she's about to sing is going to be a single or just the first time that we've heard Tortured Poets. Because any other time that she's done something like this on stage where during the surprise song set, she throws something on the jumbotron about an album like it's it's been a re-record announcement or a re-record release and so um she while the new tortured poets department variant is featured on the big old screen behind her she starts to play the piano and she plays you're losing me (laughs) and i'm laughing because i know you're probably going to tell your story but uh jesse was on a live during that and um what was your relive your reaction for us Oh my goodness. So I was, well, what had happened was it's obviously, you know, we're in America. So it was like 430 in the morning and I was not watching the live, but my phone starts blowing up and I, I get on and it's some of my friends, some creator friends, Courtney, Alex, and Alyssa. And they're on a live. And I mean, I'm just like getting notifications left and right. Like Taylor's doing something, something's happening. Um, yeah, she had said something during the um, champagne problem speech. I think that's whenever she said, hey, you can call it tortured poets. And she might have said something else, I think, that kind of like indicated to everyone like, hey, yo, what's up? Get get online for this. I was sleeping. Obviously, I didn't get up. So during the champagne problem speech, she said she was talking about tortured poets. And she said, we're going to talk about that more later. Mm. And that's when everyone it like blew up. My phone blew up like it just started going crazy. So I got up and I got on the live and the four of us are just watching this go down. Right. And we're all like dead silent. Like you could hear a pin drop because we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to get to hear the first tortured poets. Right. Like something. Um, and she starts playing, you're losing me. And it took me, you can tell when you watch, cause I have the video up on my TikTok. You guys can see it. Um, I can pin it too, but you can see me trying to process like what she's playing. I can't even tell that it's, you're losing me for like the first 10 seconds. Yeah. Everyone had different reactions. It was such a, if you guys haven't seen it, go to Jesse's TikTok, Jeffy, Jeffy, (laughs) Jesse Swift talk. And, um, yeah, you had a recording of it and it's hilarious. I mean, honestly, the way that you guys all just had like completely different. I think Liz started like looking stuff up and like you could just tell everyone was like in totally different spaces. Yeah. Like, I mean, it sounded like Courtney started crying. (laughs) I was confused and trying to hear what song it was. Liz was like, yeah, looking stuff up. And then she's just like bopping along, singing (laughs) along to it. And like, I think Alex just looked too stunned to speak. Alex was stressed. Yes. Stressed. (laughs) Yes. That's exactly what it was. He, but the minute he saw, so once I, it registered that it was, you're losing me and that she had the new variant up behind her and that this was very clearly about it being a breakup album about Joe Alwyn. So I, you can, you can literally see the moment where I just, I start crying. Like, I mean, I kind of lose it because it's like, it's the first time you're hearing this. That's such a beautiful song, such Mm -hmm. a powerful song. And if this song is any indication of what Tortured Poets is going to be like, we're wrecked. Oh, yeah, we definitely are. And that kind of led into a theory video that I had actually thrown up this week surrounding um, the twos, right? So over the past, I don't know, gosh, years now, but more focused over the last several months, there have been situations like TikToks or when she's on stage where she throws up a little peace sign representing a two. 
And so um, we had the variant that uh, she dropped while she was in Melbourne. It obviously expired. It was a short term thing. And Taylor Nation on their stories on Instagram reminded us about the timer being up 22 hours ahead and then again two hours ahead and then the variant expired at 2 p.m. So I was like, what the hell is happening with the twos? And so I started thinking, like, is there something poetically about twos, like, you know, where there's two poems that align or something like that? And I found contrapuntal poems, which is the concept of two basically poems that you could read one, the other, or when you align them side by side, you could read them side by side. It creates a full story. And the reason that that stood out was because not only the mashups, right? She's been kind of showing us that she can put her songs together in a way where it tells a third part of the story. But the use of You're Losing Me the first night when she announced the Bolter variant of Tortured Poets stands out because when You're Losing Me dropped, a lot of people, they layered it with tons of songs, but it perfectly layers with Cornelia Street where the like interchanging of the pauses because if you imagine cornelia street it's like um we were in the back seat drunk on something stronger than the drinks at the bar okay i'm sorry for saying to you guys but then it's like then it pauses and there's like a da, 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 da. i rent a place on cornelia street so like between those verses on cornelia street the timing of your losing me fits right in and it has pauses. And so it doesn't, it's not like a full story, but it's just kind of showing both sides. It's like the start of the relationship and the anxiety around, I hope I never lose you, lose guys. I hope I never lose you. I hope it never ends. And now we have a song that's like, stop, you're losing me. And so that kind of idea that one song could maybe be the other half of the story or a later version of the story and layer in a way like that it makes me question if that's where the twos are coming from and if there's going to be a lot more of that from the entire album of the tortured poets department definitely i think that finding that it's incredible to think how many other songs has she done that can fit like that yeah I know I'm like trying to find software on my phone where I could like layer songs together. Yeah, I could honestly, Anna, I could listen to you talk about that all day, like what you're talking about, because it you explain it so well and it's so interesting to me. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I've been a little bit off my theory game lately just with all the podcasts and, um, you know, my brain capacity. But this one really stood out to me. And I've been doing a lot of research with poetry. And another thing that really stands out is on the back of each of the variants. So the original and then now the Bolter variant, she has this like poem that the words are kind of placed in random spots. The, um, the white one I'm going to read from here. The white one says, I love you. It's ruining my life. And then the newer one, which is more of that uh, parchment color, is it says on the back, you don't get to tell me about sad, which we'll get into. I'm sure you'll, you'll speak a little bit about the sad song thing. But um, I kind of thought that could be two different types of poetry that I was looking up because the way that it, the words are placed on the back cover is it's not in any sequential order. They're kind of random. And so you have what they call concrete poetry, which means that the actual placement of the words is intentional and has meaning behind it. Um, but then it could also be what's called erasure poetry, where you take a existing body of work and like, let's say you imagine you had a newspaper article and then you black out sections of it. And then the words that are remaining make the poem. And I feel like whatever we're seeing on the back is erasure poetry. I think it's probably to do with maybe lyrics of a song on the Torture Poets Department. I tried to look up, is there any, you know, interviews of Taylor out there that she's trying to rewrite by erasing words and making it have different meaning as there existing lyrics, but um, not really anything coming up yet. So then I question, maybe it's related to the bonus track in a way that that poem uh, is, is something it's, it's clearly not a one to, like there's, this is not literal. There's something about that. That is very artistically unique. Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's, it's so cool to hear you talk about that. Cause like the different types of poetry and like, mm -hmm. I'm just learning like you are and everyone else, I think I'm learning so much just 
before this album even drops about poetry like look look what she's doing look at this effect like we are going out and seeking literature Mm -hmm. and learning like on our own and I'm sure we're not the only ones no god no well and I had layered the two back albums together like I put them in Canva and like made one a little bit transparent over the other to see where the um where the words kind of align between the two variants and I couldn't you know there's going to be probably more pieces I couldn't really figure it out but um I've seen other people say that they've seen people do that too and so like I'm not the only one out here layering the the back of the album covers and to your point I think it's pretty fascinating that everyone is um is really kind of looking at art differently and trying to find poetic vibes I do want to quickly circle back to the first night in Tokyo when she sang Holy Ground, obviously I mentioned last week that that's one of my favorite songs. I didn't even realize it until this week, but Holy Ground has the lyric, you fit into my poems like a perfect rhyme. And so I'm like, maybe that was, maybe that was one of the reasons why she picked Holy Ground. So um, she's, she's been talking about being a poet for a long time. It's not just, you know, isolated to recent history. Yeah, really. I mean, it, that's, that's what she is. She's a poet. I mean, she's a modern day William Wordsworth, like literally Emily Dickinson. She is making poetry cool again. I've always loved poetry. Some people are not literature people. They're not reading people. They're not poetry people. But I'm seeing her do this in a way that's getting people to really get interested in it and come mm -hmm. together. Totally. I like to joke that I think the album is going to have a whole new sound and it's going to be like slam poetry, like, <laughs> like Hamilton <laughs> style. Oh my gosh. What if she just like drops it on us and we're like, okay, no, we'll love it regardless. So we did get a Q&A submitted by Adam that relates to all of what we're talking about. So pulled it out for the episode. Asks, how many variants do you think the Tortured Poets Department will have? And what are your thoughts on the new bonus track? bolter so first how many variants do you think at least three at least because if you look at the logo you can clearly see a roman numeral three in there mm -hmm. you can some people have said two you, you know you kind of go back and forth because the one like is tied to the d or the p i think um but yeah i i've always seen three yeah um, yeah, I agree. I think three is an odd number. So I would say four, five. I don't know. I mean, if it's anything like Midnight's, do you even count all of the different versions as variants? Like if, you know, this more falls in line with a 1989 rollout or something where you get very specific vinyls that have different looks and probably have different inserts and everything. Right. She has a very, a very good marketing strategy of just like with a perfect example would be Midnight's where the back four make a clock. <laughs> oh yeah. Midnight's had four variants. I didn't even think about that when I was just giving the example. So yeah. Um, and she didn't really do that with Evermore folklore, right? No, mm -hmm. not like, not like she started doing with Midnight's and then you see it again with 89 and how mm -hmm. she had the four different, you know, Sunrise Boulevard and, um, Aquamarine. And I, I mean, it's just, it's, she's such a smart businesswoman. You think there's still going to be another 1989? It's, I cannot get over it. Like, <laughs> Me neither. I, I can't, I can't get over a double 1989. I mean, <laughs> I, I know we're probably well past that. Guys, but... she gave so many signs. Like, let's be fucking real. There were so many signs. Yeah, there, there were, um, especially with the 1989 on the manual twice and like, oh my gosh, all the, all the literal signs that. Yeah. Well, never... the mashup of the three getaway car, the other side of the door in August, uh, track eight, track nine, track 19. Uh, we won't get too far into that. I didn't mean to sidebar. Let's go back to Adam's question with the bolter and the significance behind that bonus track. Okay. So. The minute you see the bonus track says the bolter, we run and start looking up, okay, is there a movie called the bolter? Is there a book? What is it? So there's a couple different things that it could be that I saw. And even these might not be right. I mean, this is what she releases a variant 
and then releases the title of a bonus track and you have tons of people going and researching that title, like I've said before, never seen anything like this. First and foremost, The Bolter is a book. It's a book by Francis Osborne and it's the story of Idina Sackville. It's a true story. And I'll read you guys just a quick synopsis of what this is. In an age of bolters, women who broke the rules and fled their marriages, Idina Sackville was the most celebrated of them all. Her relentless affairs, wild sex parties, and brazen flaunting of convention shocked high society and inspired countless writers and artists from Nancy Mitford to Greta Garbo. But Idina's compelling charm masked the pain of betrayal and heartbreak. So that's the synopsis of the book, The Bolter, which a lot of people are kind of relating a little bit to, you know, Taylor's life and artistry. Well, there, yeah, there were things. Um, so I got the ebook after I saw a creator. Her name is Megan. So it's M A Y N A N M O M B I, Megan. That's like the most letters that sound the same. I just had to say that three times. Okay, so Megan has been reading the book and she's the one who got me to get the audio book um, just because she has uh, noticed things like even the blackened reputation that is referred to really early on. There are things within the book, the way that it's written, the way that they describe Adina that are just so parallel to themes that we see in Taylor's discography. So it's one of those things where it doesn't feel like a coincidence. Um, and the idea of like the fact that this woman in the 1920s and 30s was scandalous and she was always getting married and then running on to the next, like there's, there's some fun themes there. Um, so I got the auto book. It's a little bit painful to listen to. I'll be honest. It's just, it's like hard to follow, but I also have ADHD. So my brain just will, if, if you're not captivating, I will start to think about other things. Um, but Megan's been doing a great job kind of recapping things as she reads it. If you do want to jump over to her page. Um, and then she's also been supporting Jesse's 630 theory. She's a big, uh, she's a big advocate that something is coming on 630. So. So I've also been reading um, Blue Blood by Craig Unger, and that's the story of Rebecca Harkness. And if you guys go to my TikTok on my playlist and look at Blue Blood, I have been like reading that chapter by chapter and breaking it down for you guys so you don't have to do it. Um, I have yet to put a new one out, like read a new chapter, but I've been busy, but I will get back to that. So yeah, it's interesting. Like you, now, now you're behind. We got to read about the Bolter and Edina, and now we've got to read about uh, Clara Bow. You know, so <laughs> I'm like, Taylor's got to slow down. I'm just kidding. We we want more albums. We can we'll take more music, but there's definitely some literary um, people that she has been referencing. Obviously, Rebecca Harkness is no dispute. That's what that song was about. Um, but this Bolter book is just one of the potentials um, that could be related. So what are some of the other ones that you thought of whenever you heard the bonus track name? So in doing some research and seeing, you know, what other people online have found, um, there is a pub in London called The Bolter. So we do not have any pictures or confirmation that I know of that Joe and Taylor had been there or frequented it or if he went there with his friends or if she went there. I mean, but it could be. It could be about that. Um, that could have been, you know one of the bars that she sings about in her songs. You yep. know, we don't know. Um, it could be where something significant happened between them. But there is definitely a pub in London called The Bolter. The bar, yeah, the, the pub could definitely be something, kind of like how she talked about the bus stop. What song was that where she talked about the bus stop and she wasn't literally talking about a bus stop. She was talking about the cafe in New York. I, th I thought I saw you at the bus stop. I didn't, though. What song was oh. that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw you at the bus stop. I didn't, though. And we were something, don't you think so? Oh, we from family, close family. And if we could, the one. The one. The one. Um, people have said the bus stop's not literally like the bus stop. She's talking about a cafe, I guess, in New York um, called the bus stop. So that definitely could be, if, if the bolter is somewhere they've been, I could see her referencing it. Um, the thought that I had, which is not so uh, driven by research or any type of theory, just when I heard the word bolter, I thought about being bolted 
down. I know we talked about Adina and how she bolted from marriages that, you know, that's kind of the theme. I'm assuming that's why they called her the bolter because she would leave. And I could see Taylor being a bolter in that sense of just like renewing her life and, and jumping from life to life. Um, you know, you're on your own kid is kind of that theme of starting anew. But when I heard bolter, I thought of being, instead of bolting from something as a person, I thought about being bolted down. Like, so if you imagine, I don't know why this is the imagery in my head, but like a flagpole, um, usually you could very, like clearly see the rivets that are bolting the pole to concrete. And so that's the bolts that I thought of. And so again, it could also be a theme like that of being like held down. And to go along with that, my first thought was a deadbolt lock. So not that she was like literally locked away by him and he had a key and locked her up, but like they, they were never seen hardly ever. So maybe that's just a reference or meta metaphor for being, you know, deadbolt. Dead yeah. locked well, in. and one thing too, that stands out, um, with the key and the deadbolt. So in, we were in Paris, wasn't that the one where she's like, is that your key down the hall? No, it wasn't. Uh, we were it's Paris. different. It hits different. Yeah. And she says, is that your key in the doorway? Is it you or have they come to take me away? And um, that, you know, kind of like a mental institution vibe there of like, have they come to take me away? Am I going crazy? And then Clara Bow in her life. So Clara Bow is the uh, track name on one of the tracks on Tortured Poets. And um, she is somebody who late in her life is known to kind of maybe have like schizophrenia or something like that and um, really kind of lost her sanity. And so the idea of like, losing Taylor's sanity. I could see the key in the doorway, down the hallway, deadbolts, the bolter. Like there's something there. I can't say it's like so true that I'm like, yeah, this is a theory. Um, but if anybody's listening, just kind of start to clock those things as we get this new album out, because there may be more clues kind of tying those pieces together. Well, and also a big portion of Joe and Taylor's relationship was during COVID. So there was Lockdown. a lot yeah lockdown so that could be there we go we just thought of another one i mean there's so many different um the other thing that we heavily saw going on around online um was the video it's like a two second clip of joe they're holding hands and he's like dragging her into a car after like um an awards show or event or party and like literally bolting from the door to the car um and like dragging her behind him and people are saying, oh, he's like bolting. He's fast. Maybe it's about that. I not, I don't think that's what it's going to be about, but um, that's just a theory that I have seen a lot of. And then the, the also the archer and the bolter, right? We talked about contrapuntal poems and, you know, could this be, um, you know, just some parallel to that, just the way that it is a ER. So it describes a person like, like a, an archer and a bolter so who knows that that could be another tie so many so many different options but you just don't see this with anybody like any artist like they put out a song title we don't know anything about it and we just go research it and we have like a list of things that could be about before we even hear it yeah and like there's no prize to winning like to knowing yeah. it's just it's just fun um yeah. So now that we really hit on Melbourne and talking about what has unveiled this past week with the Tortured Poets Department, we will talk next about the Sydney shows. Um, first, I do want to hit on some things before I get to Sydney, just kind of plugging back some unfinished business from previous episodes. So 216, Jesse, that was a date that everyone was eyeing because of the 112 theory. It was exactly 112 days from the release of 1989, which was October 27th of last year. So, you know, many of us thought it reputation. She dropped the announcement of the tortured poets at the Grammy. So that really kind of made everyone, huh? What? Um, and then I was joking. I'm like, maybe we'll just get a merch drop on 216. Like maybe she'll still throw us a bone. Um, but that has now come and passed. Any kind of thoughts or lingering things there? That was the day she released the Bolter and the second variant. Oh, was That's it really? Only... Am I stupid? I get mixed up with the times of uh, Austria. No, you're right. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. I think that was the same same day. Okay. So, yeah, she didn't, like, leave us hanging. 
Yeah, I mean, there's something, but I don't, I don't know if it fits or how it fits into the 112 theory. Um, you guys make sure you keep up with Nikki on TikTok with that. Um, but I find it interesting that we're filming today, which is Wednesday, February 21st. Um, so a couple things about this day that's significant is that it's Joe Alwyn's birthday. Happy 33rd, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how happy this birthday will be for him, but um, yeah, so Taylor today in the news, um, you would have seen that she was seen at the Sydney Zoo, and Travis has just landed in Sydney to be at her show tonight. Yep. So I'm very interested to see what surprise songs she plays Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. If I didn't have like a normal nine to five, I would just like legitimately take a Red Bull, right? I take a Red Bull. It's not a pill. <laughs> I would I would drink a Red Bull and stay up because the surprise songs are going to be fire. And to, to Jesse's point, by the time people are listening to this, the, you, we're already gonna, you guys are going to know more than we do now. Um, but super, super thrilled to have another really jam-packed week of... Uh, hopefully some really good surprises. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction because so Joe's birthday, Travis lands in Sydney. I think the surprise songs, I think there are, is going to be a mashup, but I think the first song is going to have to do with the ending of the relationship with Joe. And the second song will have something to do with her new love, Travis. Oh my God. What if it's be, what if it's begin again? Oh, <gasps> That's my prediction. It is Wednesday, February 21st. And if she plays Begin Again, you guys clock it. Uh, <laughs> on a Wednesday in a cafe. Yes. Yeah. Watched it begin again. What are your predictions? We got to th let's think of a few for the for the pod here. Anything oh that goodness. we think would be because like, obviously, there's good love songs. Was there anything that's really the if he wanted to, he would type of thing? Is there anything about like somebody going be above and beyond? Oh, my gosh, that's I have not thought about that. Um, yeah, I think begin again is a good prediction. I'm gonna have to think more. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll think on that. Um, but you know, she'll probably mash up a bunch of shit and it's gonna be all these numbers and we'll be back here next week trying to clue in like what it means and it's not gonna be so literal. But I am excited for Karma to sing the guy on the Chiefs, because let's be for real, she better sing that. That you think she'll do it? I think so. I think so. I'm really looking forward to my TikTok feed as well, just being like random ass videos of Travis in the booth with Scott Swift. And um, I'm like, it's, I'm kind of being sarcastic, but I'm also not like, I really think that's so enjoyable. It's just like, I don't know, it's just innocent entertainment. There's really not much that's problematic about it. And and it's a good time to watch. I did see um, one person was talking about they watched the um, the Taylor and Travis videos online, like in first person, <laughs> like it's like happening to them. And I'm like, I think we all kind of are to some degree, like not that, you know, we're not like happily married or in relationships or, right. or even if you're single, um, but you just like the amount of um, emotional wholeness that you feel to see Taylor in love, knowing how much she's been a part of our lives. It's it's really significant. So I'm excited that he's there, there and I'm excited for all of our Australia Swifties who are going to be able to uh, experience that in person. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, up or down on Jason Kelsey showing up and then showing up on stage. Have you seen the the meme of him on stage during? <laughs> okay. No. There's one know. going around. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. No, I'll have to look at that, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's I, I don't even think he'll show up, but um, great. Do you want to circle back to June 30th? Is there anything there that we want to touch on as far as uh, your reputation theory? Oh, yeah, actually. Um, so with my June 30th theory that she's going to announce reputation, Taylor's version in Dublin, Ireland, um, she has started saying lucky a lot on stage. So I'm really lucky to be here. I'm like, she's, I mean, she's said it several times now. So that kind of gives me like, makes my alarms go off that, okay. Hmm. Yeah. And then she did, this might be unrelated, but the Taylor Nation post from this week with the cats, it was the image from the funeral scene in anti-hero music video where she has the 11 cats on her. 
And the caption said, if we won the lottery, you wouldn't know, which apparently is a TikTok trend. I I didn't know about it, um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, there's tons of trends. Like Taylor Nation doesn't just do every trend. If there's something that aligns with what they're kind of thinking, they might jump on a trend. And so um, it stood out to me, the concept of a lottery, not only was the whole Ticketmaster debacle, a lottery system um, in getting a code and being able to actually get online to purchase tickets. That is a lottery system. Um, but Midnight's Mayhem with Me, which is how she rolled out the Midnight's track names in 2022 ahead of its release. She had one of those little ball cages. You see like an old school bingo type thing. It's it's called like a bingo machine or a, a bingo ball machine or a lottery machine, like a power ball. And so she would roll it and then one of the balls will fall out and then she picked it up and it was a number and with that number she revealed the track name so seeing the word lottery stood out to me and then apparently she's been saying this for a long time but um it's something that i did catch in ty's video that he did specifically for one of the nights in melbourne so ty our tour respondent um he does those videos for us but then he'll do a more detailed one on his TikTok page per night so if you want like more of the deets and then he'll include footage and stuff like that definitely go to his page but he had featured taylor on stage giving a speech during the lover set and she said you know speaking to the crowd about how large it is that she feels like she's won a contest you know, a contest winner. She said both contest winner and like I won a contest back to back. So the concept of contest alongside the lottery and some of the things that we've just seen with her in the past, like those are just things that I'm clocking right now. I don't really know where that's headed, but. Well, she, so I did a video on this too on my TikTok um, when they had posted that, what came to my mind was a, contest a poetry writing contest and if you win that contest maybe you get Eris tour tickets I don't know I just thought because Taylor did win a poetry writing contest when she was 10. Yeah shout out to Courtney I think who helped us figure that one out. Yes yes yeah so there's there's something there like I said sometimes we'll 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 kind of sprinkle things out as we're thinking it we don't necessarily want to wait until we have fully fledged thoughts just so you guys can help us and have a little bit of fun doing some of the research too um but yeah contest prizes clues you know you play stupid games you win stupid prizes like um mm -hmm. there's definitely uh that we were just talking about a lyric the other day of um game game token and, yes. and high infidelity oh. Yes, that's a good, that's, that's one um, you guys are going to have to watch for a video. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a whole theory around it, but yeah, even just the word game token, whenever you think mm -hmm. back to like this idea of a contest, like there's something about it. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Also, you'll want to keep a watch on Jesse's page here in the coming days after we launch this, her and I had some major epiphanies this morning. We were we were looking for one thing and we found another and it was one of those like magical moments i wish we were recording because we were like holy shit so instead of half baked ideas right now jesse's gonna get a full video together so just if you don't follow her yet go follow her because um there's some things that i mean i feel like this is argyle big not not to relate it it has nothing to do with argyle but just like like i feel like there's a lot to it that people don't know yet and it's gonna shock a lot of people Yep, it's something that Anna just kind of stumbled upon while looking for something else. And it's huge, you guys. Yeah, like it was a stumble. Like, I don't know where I was on the internet. And then next thing you know, I'm on a Wikipedia page and reading it. And I'm like, hold, like, I won't even get into it. Just keep an eye for it. Jesse Swift talk and de definitely follow the pod too. So if you don't yet, TS pod network is our handle throughout the internet. So um, that's obviously our YouTube handle. We've got a TikTok. We've got an Instagram guys. Please go follow our Instagram. We look kind of pathetic on there. I think we have like 84 the followers. So if you are on Instagram, just if you could punch the follow button and then also just make sure you're telling your friends about us just because we've seen such a great amount of momentum. And so if you are watching this or listening to these, um, you know, just letting your friends know about the podcast will do such a great service for us to allow us to grow because we would love to monetize at some point and be able to you know, pump these out quicker and hire support and, you know, all those things. So right now we're just kind of bootstrapping it, but essentially uh, we see the end in sight and we're really excited and we appreciate everyone that's been here already. 
um, because this has been faster and bigger than our expectations absolutely in this first month. Oh, definitely, definitely. And thank you for all your sweet words. Everyone that's, oh you know, said that they listen to us every Friday morning on their walks. And I mean, that's just incredible to me. Yeah, we're living for you. Like I like whenever I'm up late at night posting this stuff, I'm like, I, I love it. I love going to bed and then waking up and having watches and listens already because we do have an international listener base, like over 25% of our listeners are non-US. And so I know a lot of that is our international Swifties. So just huge shout out there. And if you are, if you are in a different country, like drop it in the comments on our YouTube. Like we would love to kind of, you know, start to clock like where everyone is. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, great. Well, as we kind of wrap here, I do want to touch back on the 87 hat that we talked about on the last episode. We are running the giveaway contest through the end of the month. So that is February 29th. Head over to tspodnetwork.com and there is a form that you can fill out. So the way that you enter is that you can follow us on TikTok. You can subscribe to our YouTube, or if you want two entries, you can do both. But we won't know that you're trying to get the hat unless you fill out the form on the website. So just because you're already a follower or you run and follow right now, because again, existing followers can enter, um, but make sure you come and let us know through that form. It will ask you for your contact information, and then it will just ask you to verify a couple things. And then the full contest rules are listed on the site if there's any questions. But this is the exact hat. Um, it's like a replica because it's the same pattern. It was made by our friend Beth Moss. She does have an Etsy shop, and we did launch a page on our website last week featuring a few of the creators who have been so kind to gift us stuff, things that you may have seen on the pod. So linking those things out to the Swifty creators who gifted them to us so that if you wanted your very own Champagne problem sweatshirt or I've got the Lavender Haze uh, painting behind me, there's prints of it. So definitely just keep checking back. We're going to spend some time expanding that and, and continuing to grow it. But um, go go submit for the contest. And then if you if you just want the hat, go buy it because we've got the link on our site. Yeah. And also I want to kind of piggyback on that. Um, if you are an Etsy creator or you do some, some of the small business stuff and you do want to send us something, let us know and we will feature it on our TikTok, on the pod, all of that. Yeah, so. we'll put it on our site too, like at the very least, mm -hmm. like, it, you know, even if it's not something crazy, like we're happy to help you out, especially, um, you know, if you are a Swifty making Swifty products for Swifties, like that's kind of the the goal here. We're not trying to do, you know, sponsored. I mean, we would love to be sponsored, let's be honest, right? but that's like, th those are the big name companies. But for the Etsy creators and all of our Swifty friends, like we're not charging for this. So send us stuff, we'll feature it. We'll try and get your name out there for you small business for sure support it mm -hmm. and then i would love to do a giveaway each month so we'll yeah. just kind of keep an eye out on that obviously we're a little bit i'm you know putting the cart before the horse because it's going to be march here in like a week um but definitely the end of february marks marks the end of this giveaway and then if you do have anything you'd like to donate or be featured just just give us a shout out you can message us on any of our social channels and then of course we've got a email on our website Yep. And also make sure you guys are paying attention to me, my background, because I'm leaving an Easter egg in every episode. And toward the end of the month or the beginning of the following month, I'll let you know what was in each each episode. But there's a link or a form on our website that you can go. Yeah, I'm obsessed with the Easter egg guesses. Like, guys, keep guessing. They are so good. Like, it's making me realize, like, what we're not noticing about your background. So... <laughs> So yeah, I'm just laughing so hard. I don't want to give it away, but somebody guessed something and I was like, huh? Yeah, it's about the lighting and just whatever. But um, but yeah, definitely keep guessing. And like she said, at the end of each month, we'll give it away. It's just good fun. You know, things that are maybe new in her background. And like I said last week, my background is just a bunch of shit. Like it's going to move around. There's gonna be new stuff. Oh yeah, no, I think, I mean, it is as chaotic Yours as my is life gorgeous. is. Yours is gorgeous. Mine's just like, we're going to work on it. We're yeah. going to work on it. Yeah, well, I'm not leaving any clues is what I'm saying. You guys can zoom in all you want and check it out, but there's nothing back there for the Easter eggs. Well, go to Anna's TikTok, Creative Chronicles, and she does a lot of DIY stuff, home-based stuff, and it's amazing. She is a great interior designer, I must Thank say. Thank you. 
Thank you. I do owe a video of how I did this wallpaper. I recorded the whole thing and, um, you know, it, I'll get it up at some point, but yeah, that's really where my TikTok journey started was, uh, teaching the tricks and tips of how to make your home look good on a budget. Yep. So. She's actually going to help me with my house and we'll film it for you guys. Yeah. So exciting. Um, <laughs> All right, great. Well, I think that really wraps up for today. So like we said, Sydney is likely going on right now this weekend as you guys are catching up on this podcast. So we're really excited to meet up with you next week. Jessie pulled out her golf club for that one. Um, Sydney? <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> so uh, we will be back next week. We'll recap on that. And hopefully she just does a bunch of crazy shit this weekend and it's completely unhinged and we have tons of topics to talk about. Um, but in the meantime, we appreciate every single one of you who comes back and listens each week. It is just driving our lives. We absolutely are just so fulfilled by this and, um, we love you guys. Bye.